at a certain point you end up where you are. And uh, I think asking how you got to where you are is less important than asking where you want to go from where you are. Not that it's not important to know how you got where you are. But Bayard was one of the two people who had a really profound impact on my life. Come on up here, Peggy. The other was A.J. Musty. Um, I was never sexually involved with Bayard, never found Bayard sexually interesting, um, which is sort of important to state because he really had a very deep impact on me and because, of course, he was gay. And I heard him speak in 1949 at an FOR event, and I was absolutely entranced. I followed him to the, his two speaking dates the next day. I followed him to the speaking dates he had on Sunday. I had sort of adopted his uh, tone of voice, his gestures and drama of precisely therefore we show the accent. Um, I didn't even read Pascal's literature for some time. I had simply memorized it from, from listening to Bayard. He paid his dues so many times over in terms of the beatings, prison time, and the hardships of being homosexual. That has a stunningly good looking young man. Um, actually, I'm trying to see whether Dorothy Day is in the picture. Dorothy was there. Dorothy, I don't see her. That's H.A. Musty to one side. And then five of us who burned our draft cards in 1965. I don't have the month. Um, all of us were indicted. It was never the idea of the fashion that caught my attention. It was the idea of the, the jungles of the, of the Philippines out of which the sandalwood trees are cut down and, and distilled, or the patchouli bushes are distilled, and you have barrels of, of oils coming by sea. Uh, and, and, and all of the drama of the raw materials of perfumery, that fascinated me, much more than the idea of the magazine ads and the, <coughs> the women and the fancy dress. That wasn't so interesting. But to smell a genuine perfume, a real perfume, uh, and they differ enormously, but to smell a real perfume is to, is to enter an area of enchantment. I had met Alvin Ailey in a men's room at UCLA. Alvin was 18, I was 19. And uh, that particular sexual encounter was very liberating and didn't leave me feeling guilty and made it possible for me to think of myself as homosexual. After the encounter with Alvin, I was always personally comfortable, although with some level of guilt that will stay there because of when I was born. Uh, and I was never, <coughs> uh, never hidden in terms of friends or the movement. Uh, it was always an open secret. I never went to dances or parties with a cover, uh, a girlfriend as a cover. But it wasn't until 69 when the Wynn magazine had a gay liberation issue that Paul Goodman and Allen Ginsberg and I had pieces in that, that I came out officially. Well, I think it's been a good life. Obviously, it's drawing to an end. At 79, one has a very different outlook on time, I think, than at 49 or 39. Um, but I think, you know, by and large, it's been uh, a good life. No, those are grand, grand times.
You must come back here sometime when this is not such a fucking mess. It's not always this messy. <laughs>